Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday morning. Uh, so here's uh, the the next question in line is a follow up. So um, uh, about a week ago, Tina Rushton uh, uh, asked me, can you tell me if there are any cost savings between the pandemic due to students not being in facilities? She had a little bit more to the question. Um, and then I gave her a response, which you can, you can see above. Uh, and I talked about hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, and then in a follow up to that, um, uh, Jason Phelps uh, reached out and said, I was surprised the actual amount is unknown at this time, three months into the pandemic and is in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. That range is quite large, from 200,000 to 900. So that reply, so that reply should be safe. The superintendent also talked about the confusion about state reimbursement and that it takes a while to finalize the books. Again, these are safe statements, but the district has a budget and I hope the actual year to date expenses are tracked and compared to both the prior year to date and the current budget. This is normal procedures for uh, normal procedure for municipalities and businesses that operate under a budget. It is great to know that there have been savings, but getting a number closer than 100 to 900,000 would be useful information for taxpayers and also transparency from the district. So here's, um, so Mr. Phelps, I appreciate your question. Um, here's the thing. So let me tell you what the projection would be. So in my reach out, oh, back when Tina actually um, originally sent the question in, I reached out to our chief financial officer, um, Rick Pembroke, and I said, look, give me a um, give me a ballpark on where we think we're going to land if all things remain the same. Uh, and he was pretty t hesitant to give me a ballpark because um, we have huge variables that are unlike other years um, that we're contending with. So, um, so let me start with, let me give you the number. So his, his was a very cautious, he did not want to be pinned to it, a very cautious $500,000. Um, but the concern is that we have all kinds of things that we don't know. We don't know from the state yet what's going to happen. So let me give you an example, big one. So the um, from the so from the state of Vermont, when the governor put out the order that we were to pay everybody, regardless of whether or not they were working, um, we um, we started doing that responding to what the governor's order was, the executive order. So we started paying all kinds of people. Now, some of those people are paid for through the state education fund. Some of those people are paid through things like uh, Title I, which is a federal uh, federal program. Uh, some of those people are a, a, a chunk, good chunk of what they do is, is reimbursed for special education through a combination of state and federal funds. So here are questions that are still outstanding. We're supposed to pay everybody um, all the way through, um, but it is still unclear if the state, based on the money they're going to receive from the feds, if the feds are going to waive some of the requirements for us to receive uh, reimbursement funds for special, edu for special educators. Uh, and so we don't know yet we're, we're getting closer and closer all the time. We think there's a good chance it is going to be covered, but we don't totally know if all of that, um, the re those reimbursement funds that we budgeted around are still coming. So as a result of that, um, that's, that affects a lot of money. Uh, and so that $500,000 could shrink a bunch. Um, so that's an issue. We also know that we need to do a whole bunch of summer planning this summer, uh, and we don't have a budget. Uh, and it is unclear as to how much money we're going to re receive from the state in um, a combination of two different types of uh, federal stimulus funds. One is called ESSER. Uh, ESSER is money that goes directly to schools um, for um, our, our utilization. We have a decent amount of flexibility about how to use that. It came from the feds. However, we have off and on in indicators that if we were to take that money to help defray COVID costs um, and help defray our, our, our budget costs, that there is a possibility that come FY21 or FY22 that the state will short us those funds um, and say, well, you got it as part of the federal thing. So now figure it out. So we're still trying to get that under control. 
that's a huge hit potentially one way or the other. It could be positive, could be negative. And there's a whole big conversation going on right now about the other big pot of money, $1.2 billion in the state of Vermont, which is called, uh, that part of the stimulus is called Corona Relief Fund, CRF. That money right now is not earmarked for schools necessarily. It has a certain number of requirements that we have to go through. Um, and there's an ongoing state level conversation about whether or not it is possible to offset some of the costs of schools as um, through those funds. Because the, the reality is, the state of Vermont's having a hard time figuring out what, whether or not they're gonna be able to spend the 1.2 billion in ways that meet the qualifications of the federal government under that stimulus package. Uh, so that's coming on. There's a whole bunch of lobbying happening at the federal level to try to get more flexibility around the utilization of those funds. So, so when I so if it feels like I'm being wishy washy in my response to um, to Ms. Rushton, it's somewhat accurate because um, we are doing all the tracking that you'd expect a responsible municipality uh, or business to do, but we are dealing with um, with a series of big variables which do not um, which we can't account for which will ultimately end up impacting how much that amount is. Um, and my concern is that if I, when I, when I was responding to, to Tina's question, my, my concern is I say $500,000, two things happen. One says, one uh, instantly, um, the, the local chatter is, we should vote down the school budget because we don't need $500,000. I heard the superintendent say that we're gonna be up $500,000. When normally we can't use that for a whole nother year anyways. And um, we usually have a fund. We have had fund balances before. So the the $500,000 $500, potential surplus isn't something that helps us to the tune of $500,000 because it just plugs the hole from a previous surplus. Um, so in the midst of all that stuff, to come out with a number like $500,000, is potentially problematic because it doesn't reflect reality and can go off and run off in all kinds of ways uh, in terms of way in which people perceive what's going on. So if my um, my hundreds of thousands of dollars, my attempt was to indicate to Ms. Rushton that there is a significant amount of money, it appears at the moment, um, that would be available. Uh, but and we anticipate that we're going to be that it would be somewhere around this five hundred thousand dollars, but we have huge questions that we cannot answer based on other other entities which affect us uh, in terms of the money. So that's the story. Again, not trying to be opaque, not trying to hide things, but trying to be, um, but tr trying to make sure that when I say stuff, that it actually is reflective of what the reality is and trending towards five hundred thousand right now is not necessarily the reality of where we're going to end up. So I hope that helps. Thanks.